Ah, the early 1900s, when the tallest building in Toronto was only 15 stories high, a bad day in traffic pretty much consisted of only horses and carriages, and this home began construction. Obviously, <laughs> there's no footage of that moment, but here we are, we bought a house! Dan and I started looking for a home even back when I was pregnant, but it can be a long hunt when things are expensive. But she's here. She's very much unavailable to come to the phone right now because she's super under construction. But I did record some footage back when we got possession from it. I think you'll get an idea of why we're making all these changes. So I hope you enjoy. The home is located in the Queen West area of the city of Toronto. Previously, Vogue magazine included Queen West as one of the 15 coolest neighborhoods in the world. This is a fact that local real estate listings love to include when they run out of things to say. This home appears on archival fire insurance plans from the late 1800s, so the house is very likely over 100 years old. Welcome to the empty home tour. This is a two-story home. The current setup is so that the main floor and the upper floor could be used by two total strangers as independent units. And hence, that's why we just went through like a big heavy door. The main floor has two bedroom areas. There's a galley kitchen, a living room, and a bathroom. We'll come over to the front bedroom. It's got a nice sunny window, a fan, which I'm sure we will discover why that is necessary once warmer weather comes in these old homes and a closet so you can easily see how someone could enjoy this as their bedroom space. Previous resident used it as an office. For us, we will be using it as more of a living room space. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take you over to the living room area. The living room area has these two hilarious windows that are not the same height from where they start or where they end. I'm not quite sure who planned these out, but it's pretty funny. And the living room currently has a bathroom attached to it. So since this is an independent rental unit, this is the previous residence. This is the pre this is Are you done, sweetie? This is the previous residence shower, toilet, vanity, sink, all that jazz. My favorite feature being the Hollywood lights. Cute little three-way mirror vanity, another fan in this room, as well, a door that leads to the basement, darkness. For now, there's a laundry unit down there. We imagine that this home has gone through a lot of renovations during its time, and so at this point, I think very few of the original details are very noticeable, but there's a few you can find in the kitchen. So one over here is this wainscoting detail. It's really nothing glamorous, but I think this is like a beadboard style, which is on the simpler side of Victorian area, Victorian era wall features. Back then, wainscoting was pretty much used for insulation as well as extra protection from water damage, hence it being in the kitchen but nowadays most people just add it as an aesthetic feature. Like beadboard is such a simplistic design, I think most of the times when it was put in it wasn't even meant to be seen. I don't think we'll be keeping it. I also have neglected to mention just how truly green this kitchen is. The green countertop, green painting in the shelves, one giant green wall. There was a lot of love for green. Oh and if you come and turn around, this is the other more Victorian detail that remains as well. This doorway casing with this bullseye corner block. I've been trying to brush up on my interior design terminology. This is one of the probably most signature items on this main floor that's still standing. And the last one to see is this back bedroom. The echo in this room is the least noticeable because it has lovely carpet. Gray with all sorts of discoloration and chaoticness going on and I'm standing on it in my bare socks, so hopefully these are all good choices. Another fan in this room. So becoming suspicious with the number of fans here and 
what that might mean for summertime. The plan is to open it up to be a place for entertaining, cooking while keeping an eye on Marla and also letting more natural light flow through the home. With the walls removed, the current bathroom would be right in the middle of the living room, so we are moving that to the side as a smaller powder room. We're excited to open up the stairwell and we want to add a back exit so there's a shorter path between our parking spot and the kitchen. All right, upstairs. <laughs> These are definitely the original stairs. I don't think the carpet is original. And ooh, more interior terminology. This newel post is very likely original along with the entire staircase railing. This millwork is apparently a very common Victorian era thing. Our home is definitely built in the Victorian times, but it lacks a lot of the really elaborate detailing. And so we just have decided that whoever built this home was either on a budget or had simpler tastes? No idea. The upper floor consists of two bedrooms, one bathroom, and one room in the back that is currently being used as a kitchen but technically counts as a third bedroom. This is the largest bedroom in the home. I don't know if you can hear the creaky floors, but that's very original. We really love this little window co. Closet is pretty small. Minimalist life, I'm down for it. Sometimes it's a thing with Hardwood floors, if you want to change up their color, you can sand them and repaint them. But I think this one is all the way down to its nails. And so either we have to embrace the color that it is, because it should not be sanded anymore, or we'd have to completely redo the flooring. And that is a decision we are leaving for a later time. Next bedroom is a little bit smaller. It's got this super cute two-door detail. These big blocks of wood, which the previous owner left behind and told us that they have been custom fitted to go on the floor underneath a bed to make the bed level in this room because like many old houses this room and whole house is slowly tilting down one little step watch your step we have the bathroom we've got one of these little old vent covers down here, which I find so fascinating. This is also a very original feature. These baseboards nowadays, you pay extra for them to be this thick because nowadays we just want to save money and have as little material as possible. So we'd like to keep that. The last room is currently a kitchen. <laughs> it's also currently being used as a laundry situation. This is like the room that really does it all for you. Our favorite thing about this room though is that it has a back exit, it takes you across a little bridge and onto a rooftop patio. We'll be using that in the summertime for barbecue and fun and hosting. And my last favorite feature of our upper floor is a skylight currently covered in snow. This feels like an homage to our current studio loft that also has the skylight, but this skylight is even better because it has two little latches. So I think we can go up there. We will definitely figure out that situation. We'd like to add an ensuite bathroom and the back bedroom will be redone into my sewing studio. We will definitely also try to figure out a ladder setup to get to the skylight and the rooftop patio will be its own project once winter's over. In the last year, we basically tried every meal kit that we could get our hands on, at least in Canada. The reason we did that was because it was such a good choice for helping us adjust to becoming parents. As soon as Marla entered our life, we just lost a whole bunch of time that we used to have available to go to the grocery store, to plan our meals. The tendency to just get takeout or get delivery increased, but it just felt so bad because it's it's hefty on your food bill. And the meal kits was a fun experiment. We got to see if we actually had a favorite and we did. And then I was so happy when they offered to sponsor this video. It is HelloFresh. In case any of you have never tried a meal kit with HelloFresh, it is fresh pre-portioned ingredients with seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep and then yeah, store them in the fridge. Every week I love unboxing delivery and seeing the beautiful recipe cards. I like have my whole collection right here. 
we've kind of gathered our like greatest hits collection that we can remake whenever we want. And from cooking these week after week, you start to get the hang of a lot of kitchen fundamentals, like what staples should you always have in stock? What types of textures and flavors pair well together? I now have basically memorized how long it takes to bake all sorts of different types of vegetables because I've done it so many times. It's kind of the cooking level I dreamed of achieving where I just had more innate knowledge instead of every time feeling like I had to look a recipe up. Honestly, for me, it's like an at-home cooking class. The teacher has prepared the ingredients, prepared the recipe. Marlo's awake. We get to enjoy the final product. And because of that, every week, I also really love going inside the website to pick the recipes. I'll purposefully pick ones that have ingredients I've never tried, techniques I've never done before. It's like the closest I've ever been to cooking school and I'm loving it. <laughs> Today we are making beef and roasted red pepper ragu with spaghetti, but actually before starting I will always put the recipe up here with some magnets so it's really really easy to refer to. A pasta is probably one of the easier recipes that they have, but we always include one really easy recipe every week so that in case we're really tired or really short on time, there's still a simple option. The other thing I like to do is to remold the bag into a little countertop waste bin, which makes meal prep go a little easier. One more thing I like about this recipe is it contains something that's also Marla friendly. Whether it's carrots, sweet potatoes, any other type of ingredient that she can feed herself, I'll just leave a little bit off to the side so we can all enjoy together. For us, HelloFresh has helped meet so many of our goals. We wanted healthy, we wanted home cooked, we wanted fresh ingredients, and we're getting all of that. And we've made meal prep so fast and easy. And on top of that, the recipes are so tasty. There are so many recipes to choose from, so you don't ever feel stuck making the same thing over and over. All of their produce gets from the farm to your doorstep in under a week. It's very fresh. Since everything is pre-portioned, it is cut down dramatically on our food waste which feels really good from a sustainability perspective. So many times where you throw out food waste that's gone bad from your fridge and you just feel bad because you paid money for it and then never ever got to enjoy it. Now instead, virtually no food waste, enjoying fresh food and learning new things all the time, which I did not think I would have time to do. If you wanna try HelloFresh, go to hellofresh.com, use the code WENDY16, you will get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Let's dive in. Such a simple recipe, but still so tasty. Currently, my in-laws are on HelloFresh. My best friend is on HelloFresh. We're like swapping recipes, telling each other our little tricks that are making the whole thing even more fun and enjoyable. And overall, I'm just grateful how many times, thanks to HelloFresh, we have had happy and non-stressed meal times because it was just really easy to put together. Here with Marla, she's enjoying her lunch. Today on the menu, it's mozzarella, and I've got some toast and strawberries for her too. And Sakwa is here. I love it when all us, oh, can I fit us all? <laughs> Gone. I love it when all us three girls gather. Today I'm super excited because on the weekend we found out I don't know why we didn't think that these exist, but there's a door store in Toronto that sells antique doors, and our house has an antique door, but it opens in the wrong direction. So we want to get a door that opens in the correct direction, but it also would be nice to sell our antique door to them. Also feels exciting to get a secondhand door. I just think the older doors have so much more character and interesting history to them. So we're gonna go check out some doors. I've got 
gotten a quick tour of the door situation. Most of the ones on this side open to the left. We want those ones that open to the right. This place is so cool. We got columns, chandeliers, gorgeous large frames, lots of mirrors, little corner chair, classic vintage pieces, mantles. You could like make a fake fireplace. Uh, that's a DIY idea. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Wow. This place is nuts. This one here, for example, is pretty much exactly the size we want. 1250. I'm gonna try to pull it out and take a look. This one also basically the right size. It's a little pricier. Makes sense because the stained glass window is so much bigger and it's got more wood detailing down below. The wood also feels nicer. 